Welcome to Switzerland! We spent three weeks in Switzerland on the ultimate grand tour, visiting some of the country's most exciting cities, the incredible Swiss Alps and the Swiss Riviera on the Italian border. This Switzerland itinerary will help you plan your trip starting in Zurich and making your way around to Basel, Grindelwald, Lukerbad, Zermatt, Ticino, St. Moritz, and Bad Ragaz. Are you ready to explore Switzerland with us? Let's go! Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and make sure to click on that bell for updates whenever we post a new travel video. We've arrived in Zurich! The first stop on our Switzerland itinerary took us to Zurich and it quickly became one of our favorite places to visit in the country. We spent three days exploring Switzerland's largest city, from the charm of Old Town to the hip Zurich West neighborhood. Three days is just enough to see all the best things to do in Zurich. We highly recommend taking a city tour for an insider's guide to Zurich. Visit Zurich offers Old Town walking tours to explore hidden alleyways and popular attractions as you learn about the history and become acquainted with all its top attractions. If there's one thing you gotta do in Zurich, it's get on a paddleboard on Lake Zurich. It's awesome. Lake Zurich is the beating heart of the city and you can take a cruise, stroll along its shore, watch the sunset, or get out to one of the many public baths that line the waterfront. There's great views of the cityscape and of the Swiss Alps. If you like chocolate, you are going to love Lindt Home of Chocolate. This multimedia experience takes you through the history of chocolate to how it's made today. We're on the chocolate tour and the best part of it is getting to taste the chocolate in these giant chocolate fountains. Is this heaven or what? All aboard, let's go! One thing you cannot miss is going to the mountain overlooking Zurich. It's easy to get there using Zurich's fast and efficient public transportation system. So it costs two euro to go up the tower and get the best view. You just tap your card, that's all it is. Well, this is absolutely stunning. We are at the top of Zurich and I don't think there is a more beautiful view. Look at behind me. You have Lake Zurich, you have the Alps, you have the city. Make your way up here for sure. With plenty of cool neighborhoods, great shopping, dining, outdoor cafes and attractions, it's easy to pass the time in Zurich. But it's time to move on to our next destination on our Grand Switzerland Tour. Welcome to Basel, everybody. Known as the cultural capital of Switzerland, Basel boasts some of the country's most unique and beautiful architecture. Its modern structures blend seamlessly with the Altstadt on one side of the Rhine, looking towards Klein Basel. This is a city filled with art galleries, museums, cathedrals, and street art. Plus, the locals love to enjoy the great outdoors and parks that line the Rhine River. The Rhine is the beating heart of the city and local residents can't get enough of it. While you're there, try swimming on the Rhine or try your hand at traditional rowing. We took a trip up and down the Rhine with Weidling Basilea, where we learned how to row a Weidling boat and learned to spike our way upstream. It's a fun way to see Basel from the river while learning about the city's history. Basel has a gorgeous old town and taking a walking tour is a must. Start at the red facade of City Hall and make your way around the cobblestone streets as you get lost in the historic alleyways. Basel Minster was built between 1019 and 1500 in the Romantic and Gothic styles. It is one of the most recognizable landmarks in the city with its two towers standing tall over the River Rhine. Basel may have a rich history, but it also has a very urban vibe. Make sure to seek out some of its more modern architecture and contemporary designs. So much street art here in Basel. It's kind of interesting because it's all commissioned. 
um, but it's also somewhat hidden. So I do highly recommend a tour to find it because it is so hidden and they know exactly where all the spots are. A unique mode of transportation in Basel is the Reaction Ferry. Located between Basel's five bridges are four Reaction Ferry terminals that take passengers from Gross Basel to Klein Basel. Basel shares its border with France and Germany, making it an ideal location to make a base and explore the countryside. So make sure you get out of the city to explore some of the sites around town. We've made it out to where the three countries meet. We are standing in Switzerland, everyone, and right behind me is both France and Germany. This is a really cool place to come out to. Get yourself an e-bike and ride around. And we're doing the grand tour, everyone. This is so cool. Now, let's go. We spent four days exploring the Grindelwald region of the Swiss Alps, from the incredible views at Jungfraujagd top of Europe, to hiking the Eiger Trail and tackling amazing adventures on Grindelwald Fierst. Grindelwald is one of the top places to visit in Switzerland and four days is just enough to take it all in. Welcome to Jungfrau! Jungfraujagd is the top attraction in Grindelwald, taking you up the world's highest train station to the top of Europe. I'm at the top of Europe! Woohoo! It is the most incredible view of all these glaciers surrounding us. We have Jungfrau around us, the high mountain peaks. If you do come to this area, you have to make sure that you get up to the top of Europe. It's truly incredible. Time for the Ice Palace. The Ice Palace is a glacier tunnel that was dug in the 1930s. Covering 1,000 square meters under the Aletsch Glacier, this series of tunnels and corridors take you through a fairy tale maze of displays. The final stop is Glacier Plateau, where you walk on the snow outside, surrounded by mountains and glaciers. Well, this is it. I have the flag. I'm at the top of Europe. And I didn't even have to climb here. I just took an elevator. Yeah! <laughs> One of the best things to do in Grindelwald is to spend some time exploring Grindelwald Fierce. We're going to take you on a hike to Back Alpsy, get your heart pounding on the first flyer, take a walk in the clouds on the first cliff walk, and go speeding down the mountains on a trotty bike. The first cliff walk by Tiso is free to enter and you can walk it as many times as you like. The walk starts along a metal walkway clinging to the side of the cliff and extends out 45 meters over the void. What a view! Two, one, go! <laughs> On your way down from first bond, you can actually do the glider and the flyer down and then you can hop on the go-karts and then do the trotty bikes. You can choose as many as you like. 99 Swiss francs covers all four, or you can do only one or two, starting at 50 francs. <laughs> Grindelwald is a hiker's paradise, and there are plenty of hikes to suit all levels, from the Eiger Trail to Bakelpsi and Manliken. You'll have gorgeous panoramic views at every turn. Plus, it is here in Grindelwald that you'll have the chance to see the famous Swiss cows grazing on the side of a mountain. With canyon walks, thrilling adventures and high lookouts, Grindelwald has it all. Plus, with its charming downtown and proximity to Interlaken, this is a Swiss destination that is not to be missed.
After 10 days in Switzerland, a day of relaxation is in order and during our transfer from Grindelwald to Zermatt, we stopped at the spa town of Lukerbad for some pampering and R&R. We are in the car on our way to Lukerbad, which is a spa town. So after all of our time hiking in the mountains, we're now going to spend the day at the spa. It's pretty cool because we're, uh, to get there, you have to go through a tunnel. Your car goes on a train and the train takes you through the tunnel. So this is pretty cool. And this is called the Lochberg Tunnel. And uh, we're gonna see what it's like. We're going. This is cool. It's like we're uh, on a little cart being driven in our car. It's neat. We're in the middle of a mountain on a train in our car. It's pretty cool. Admit they've gone like basically dug right through the mountain. The drive from Grindelwald to Lukerbad is approximately two and a half hours and is quite an adventure. If you're not used to mountain roads, you may be a little nervous, but you can easily get a Swiss travel pass as well, which offers unlimited travel by train, bus, and boat all around Switzerland. Lukerbad is such a pretty town to spend a day or two in between your hiking and all of the mountains. It's known for its thermal spas, and there are a couple of cable cars that you can go up for some fantastic lookouts. So people are hiking as well, so you can spend even more time and do hiking here, or you can just relax at the spa and get a massage. We stayed at the luxurious Hotel Les Sorcelles and enjoyed its fine dining. Plus we had our very own spa and swimming pool on site. And if you want to do some hiking, there's access to the Jemmy and Torrent Railways to go up for views of the mighty Swiss peaks. There are several spots in Lukerbad, but this is the largest and the most popular. There are no photos and videos inside, of course, because it is a Swiss spa. So uh, we're just gonna go in and enjoy the afternoon. We have arrived in Zermatt. The Matterhorn is behind us and this is such a pretty town, isn't it? It really is with all the Swiss buildings, the, the Matterhorn backdrop. Man, it's no wonder this is a postcard city. Zermatt, Switzerland is home to the mighty Matterhorn. We spent three days in this glorious region of the Alps, hiking into the mountains, mountain biking and exploring the picturesque village. Zermatt is a town that was built at the foot of the Matterhorn specifically to attract tourists to the Alps. It is very busy and no motorized vehicles are allowed. So to reach Zermatt, make your way to Matterhorn Terminal Tash to catch the train. From town it is easy to get around using the many gondolas, trains and funiculars to get into the Alps. Once you arrive in Zermatt, the sky's the limit. There are hiking and biking trails, glacier lakes, and magnificent Matterhorn views. We're going to highlight four of our favorite things that we did in the mountains. We have arrived at Lake Stella Sea to, for a sunrise over the Matterhorn. This is incredible. You take the 530 gondola up and uh, it's about a 30 minute walk, maybe 20 minutes. It's pretty fast. They change the gondola every time depending on when sunrise is. So we made it up in time and it's spectacular. I'm on top of the world. And there you have it, the sun has risen over the Matterhorn. Not a bad way to get up in the morning. What do you think? Well, we just finished sunrise here at Stelesee uh, with the Matterhorn, it was awesome. And now we're heading off to do some more hiking in this beautiful area. Another amazing thing to do in Zermatt is the Five Lakes hike. You don't need to be up for sunrise for this hike. People take the entire day to enjoy the trails. The five lakes consist of Stelesi, Gringesi, Grunsi, Musaji, and Lysi. You can also mountain bike to all these lakes on the Four Lakes Mountain Bike Trail. 
Each lake has different views of the mountains. Three lakes have reflections of the Matterhorn, but I found them all to be picturesque settings in their own right. Well, this is a very scenic trail. Everything is something new on our hikes to the, all of the different lakes and lookouts and viewpoints. It's just massive hiking around here. It's awesome. We're at Glacier Paradise. 3,883 meters. Woo! What a view. Matterhorn Glacier Paradise is Europe's highest mountain station at 3,883 meters. The impressive gondola takes you up to view 38 peaks of Europe's highest mountains. We're at Glacier Paradise! People come up here for the view, but there are plenty of other things to do up here. And we're going to start with Glacier Palace, which was our favorite experience. Like this is pretty amazing. Like there's nobody here. We have this whole ice palace to ourselves you know, to walk around and explore. It's pretty awesome. You don't get that very often. Whoa, this is crazy. The minute you step outside, you feel the wind, it's freezing, you feel the altitude. I can't believe people are skiing up here. It's warm down in Zermatt and it's winter conditions up here. Hey, where else can you take an elevator almost up to 4,000 meters? I don't think anywhere else. Gornergrat is home to Europe's highest hotel. There's a small chapel, a restaurant, and an interactive museum, so it's worth spending a little bit of time once you reach the top. It's so cool because you get right up here and you're amongst all the glaciers and you're just surrounded by these peaks. Usually you'd have to fly or trek in or do a helicopter tour, but the cog train took us right up and it's a pretty special ride. Definitely. It doesn't seem real. Welcome to Lugano. From the Swiss Alps of Zermatt, we hopped in our car and drove to the Italian border where snow and ice gave way to palm trees and promenades as we explored the Swiss Riviera. Known as the Mediterranean of Switzerland, Ticino is an enchanting lake district bordering Italy. I do actually feel like I'm in Italy. Ah, uh, there's cappuccinos, there's cheese, there's pasta, and there's beautiful lakes and scenery. The first stop on our Ticino tour was the Verzasca Valley. It's famous for its glowing emerald waters flowing fast through the smooth boulders of the valley and its historic bridges. Come to the castles of Bellinzona. Bellinzona is the capital of the Ticino region of Switzerland and is not to be missed for its three castles that are a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site. Located on Lake Maggiore, Locarno is another lovely town in Ticino with pastel buildings lining its waterfront. Well, I think we must be doing the grand tour of Switzerland because I see these signs everywhere we go. This one's in Ascona. Ascona is a beautiful town on Lake Maggiore. It's, uh, I would say it's Switzerland's answer maybe to Lake Como. Uh, you know, you just want to walk around the old town, have a drink on the promenade, or just stroll the really pretty pastel buildings. You can even take a boat ride on Lake Maggiore to cross into Italy. At Oscana's waterfront is also one of the swings of the world. There are 12 of them around Ticino. Nestled between Lake Como in Italy and Lake Maggiore in Switzerland, Lake Lugano has top billing as one of the best things to do in Ticino. It will in fact remind you of Rio de Janeiro with Mont San Salvatore and Mount Bray framing the city, just like the South American country. 
Strolling along the waterfront is a must and make sure to keep an eye out for all of the art installations that line the two kilometer route from Paradiso to Parco Ciani. We have come off the world's steepest funicular here in Ticino and it has gorgeous views of the valley. There's some great hikes you can do so if you do come up here uh, bring all your hiking gear and you can hike out for about two and a half hours to a little hut where you can have some lunch and then hike on back. Cheers from 2700 meters. After three days in Ticino, we snaked our way along the Italian border from Lugano to the next stop on our grand tour of Switzerland, St. Moritz. St. Moritz, Switzerland was the birthplace of winter tourism, opening its doors in 1864. Staying at the Kulm Hotel, we enjoyed some time at the spa and this ultra-luxury resort before heading out on another gorgeous hike through the Swiss Alps. The best thing to do in St. Moritz in the summer is to go hiking, and we did the Muatis Muragi to Alplingard hike. It was absolutely beautiful. Well, we made it up to the Segantini hut here. It's an absolutely beautiful view. We're gonna enjoy a coffee and a cake. Come on, the day doesn't get better than this. Once you get there, sit back Relax and be sure to use the toilet. It's probably one of the most scenic outhouses on earth. What a view! After you've done your hike, head out to Alpschelkasserai Pontresina for some raclette. They make their cheese here. They have the best fondue and raclette in the region. And it is a great feeling while you're sitting out here on the picnic tables, enjoying the lovely weather. I think I'm in cheese heaven. <laughs> After our hike, we spent the afternoon at the spa at our Hotel Kuhn and it was divine with gorgeous views of the Alps overlooking Lake St. Moritz. On our way to our last stop in Switzerland, we made a detour to one of its most famous landmarks. We've made it out to the Landwasser Viaduct. This is probably the most famous train bridge in the world. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. No trip to Switzerland would be complete without a visit to a proper Swiss spa. And the Grand Resort Bad Ragaz is one of the most luxurious and traditional spas in Switzerland. It is also the site of Europe's first thermal water indoor pool. The resort is attached to Tamina Therme, which is a public bath, and hotel guests have access to each spa to enjoy its saunas, steam rooms, and water circuits. We are at the beautiful spa here at the Grand Bad Ragaz. This is one of the oldest spas in Switzerland. And what's really great is when you stay here is that you have access to the private spa. The adjoining spa is one of the most popular spas in all of Europe. So it's nice to escape from the crowds of the public to get into this really chic private spa on your own. We spent two nights here enjoying our luxurious room and eating at the restaurants. They have three Michelin star restaurants, several other restaurants and a bistro and bars. It's also a perfect base for hiking to one of Switzerland's most popular day hikes. The Five Lakes Hike in Pizzo. Well, it's certainly been interesting hiking around up here. We keep going, you think we're at the lake yet? Uh, Cause it's just fog. It's uh, always interesting and fun to do something like this. 
This was the one day in our three week Switzerland trip that we didn't have luck with the weather. But luckily we had a glorious spa to go back to where we spent the afternoon pampering and relaxing. Now this is a beautiful spa. I'll be back, but you can't come. This is definitely a place to unwind and relax before your flight home. And that was our grand tour of Switzerland. If you want more information, make sure to check out our Switzerland playlist for in-depth guides of all these destinations in the links below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell for updates whenever we post a new travel video.